Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is Cumley here, and today I am proud to present to you the inaugural episode of a honcho I'm going to be calling Cumley Presents. Uh, we're going to be looking at interesting games, interesting topics about the game, uh, particularly exciting events that have happened or topics of the game such as today. And today what we're talking about is low level support play, particularly in the early game. Okay, so we're going to be looking at a few different games of a few different levels, and we're going to start off with a uh, 1450 to 1550 game. Again, that's pretty low, and we're going to be focusing on this polywog priest right here, Prince Marth from Clan Loli, which is, of course, short for a lollipop, which is a um, particularly Japanese kind of uh, confectionery. <laughs> Alright, so so far what we've seen is Polywog Priest has done quite well, you know, his team didn't buy a courier and buy awards, his team doesn't really have good people for that, but uh, he went ahead and he bought a ward as well as uh, a courier. Hopefully we'll be looking to see him get up more wards and upgrade the courier at some point in the not too distant future. Obviously he won't be able to farm that well, but hopefully uh, just his passive income will be enough to give him that little boost he needs to get those support items that are so important. Uh, we do see it looks like he's going to choose to use his initial ward to block the creep spawn. Uh, that's a good choice. I do typically like actually um, getting the mid vision ASAP. Uh, they want to have the vision of the ward before they of the rune before they actually need it. Uh, there's this is fad lately of people not warding until right before the two minute rune. And then if something happens in lane that prevents you from leaving and doing it, it the mid is kind of uh, kind of fucked for that rune. And it's actually pretty painful. It does look like they're going to be going 2 versus 1 against this Predator. Uh, again, this is kind of a lower level game, so they won't be having uh, the best lanes of strategies. We have a Jungling Tempest, uh, a Doctor going up against a uh, Slither, and then bottom we have a Succubus Rampage going up against a Forsaken Archer and a Bubbles. Again, we're not super, super concerned about the other lanes. We're mostly going to be focusing on this little Polywog Priest right here on top. No, he's doing quite well. He's harassing the, the soul predator, which is what you want to do. You want to kind of time it for when there's not as many creeps um, of theirs to attack you, so you can harass much more effectively without taking as much damage. Uh, we do see their Tempest is actually going Meteor first, uh, Element Meteor. That's an interesting choice. Uh, we, won't <laughs> we won't stress out too much. We have a Dr. Repulsor who went Bottle first, and a Slither who finished his Soul Scream Ring. Please don't finish these items early. You only want to finish those to kind of collapse and condense your inventory space when the game gets a little bit later on and you need the space. It's pretty much a waste of gold until then. And of course you don't want to go Bottle first and Dr. Repulsor because you need the last hit, and that's kind of important in this game. But uh, back to Polywog Priest, let's see, where is he at? He's got about 140 gold. He could be buying another ward right now so that he can ward up the river for his mid. It doesn't look like he's choosing to do that yet. Uh, he might want to go ahead and upgrade the courier first. Hopefully that's what he's doing. But an interesting dynamic is going to be when this Predator starts getting some levels, will he uh, actually be able to kill this Polywog Priest? Because, you know, Polywog Priest is not the, uh, the tankiest hero, uh, especially in the early game. And if this Tempest comes out in ganks, it could be really, really effective. Uh, again, that's kind of why you want him to get the stun, is so that he's able to do those early ganks. I would go so far as to level stun over minions. First of many. We do see Slither with his whole screen ring getting a uh, first blood kill onto Dr. Repulsor. Again, that bottle is not going to do a ton for Dr. Repulsor when you're dealing with toxicity. Uh, the constant dot ticks are just going to prevent you from drinking your bottle very much at all. Uh, it does look like Polywog Priest is uh, is playing pretty far up here. <laughs> He's going pretty far into that, that uh, tower. He's got about 300 gold, you know. He really needs to be doing the support roll for his team right now. He's going to try and dive in on this Predator. It's going to be quite close. He does manage to get the kill, but he does also die in the process. Uh, you know, it's definitely worth probably killing him at this point in the game. You really want that kill, but... He you have to wonder if that was preventable with a little bit better positioning and getting out of the tower as soon as you knew the kill was secure. You know, once the auto attack leaves your hero, you don't need to stick around anymore. Double damage slither going right under the stuff for Repulsor. Again, look, that bottle's not going to do anything for him. He has essentially 530 HP and nothing in his uh, inventory. See, you see him just drinking and he dies. Slither actually dies here. You can see that he didn't need to keep chasing him after he had that last auto attack in. He would have been able to just let Toxicity take him down. And even if it doesn't kill him, it's going to put him so far behind in the lane that he, he might as well have died, you know? Probably where Priest does TP back top. I'm not sure he needed TP. Again, we don't see an upgraded courier and we don't see very much warding at all. Uh, there's actually no wards up for the Legion team besides the creep block. Uh, again, this is specifically looking at Polywog, who is going to fall here. 
uh, as a support player. And when you're playing a support player, it's really, really, really important that you have these early wards, that you have early counter wards even. We do see Tempest using his uh, his clutch meteor here. Uh, if he had stun, then Gladiator was pretty pretty dead. But uh, I think Gladiator will probably be able to get away just barely. Yeah, it looks like that's going to be the case. Uh, that's basically a kill if Tempest skills right. But uh, again, lower level play. You got to expect some some weird mistakes. Those are the easiest to fix in your play. To say, okay, am I just building wrong? Uh, and if you are just fixing that, it will actually do quite a bit to increase your win rate. Because really, that's what it's all about. It's not saying, how can I win every game I play? You know, because there are going to be games where we won't be able to win. We do see he's finally got his stun. He is going to go on this gladiator. And uh, pa Predator is going to be pretty close here. He just get hit by the pitfall. And uh, looks like they are both going to end up falling if he gets the attack. And he does. So, you know, a one for one exchange. Change, not too bad. Um, Polywar Priest should have gotten a little bit of a gold boost from that, and hopefully with this 500 gold, I'm really, really hoping he doesn't buy boots. Um, uh, supports really, really, really tend to get boots a lot earlier than they need to. You know, if you're playing somebody like uh, Forsaken Archer or Swift Blade or somebody like that, boots are really important to get early. But if you're playing something like Polywar Priest, you, you really need to focus on the other things first for your team. Primarily, of course, that is wards and upgrading the fucking courier. Please, every game you play, just, just upgrade the courier. Just do it every game. Just every game. First 200 gold to get, upgrade the courier. Uh, I, I prefer to just start upgraded from early at the beginning, but, you know, that's not always viable because, you know, people want to have items and whatever, whatever. We just see lots of action going down here on bottom. Uh, looks like they got some kind of gank going on. You know, we're not we're not too concerned. We're not too concerned about all this all this jazz going on. We're mostly concerned about our polywood priest. Who still hasn't bought boots and that's good. Please don't don't buy it. Don't 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 do it. Okay, he did it. He bought the boots. Uh you know, he still has a two hundred gold. He should be buy he can buy a ward and a counter ward right now. Uh, you know, there are only so many places that people tend to put wards early game. Uh, it gets a little bit more tricky when people are trying to dodge your counter wards, but, you know, first off, it, it's, it's pretty easy to counter ward quite a bit. Quite a bit. So there is doing work here. He's 3-1. Uh, Again, we're not super concerned about who actually wins the game. We're mostly focusing on how this could have been better supported. And I think by this point, most of you get the point, right? Uh, buy wards, buy couriers. If you're going to play a support, then just buying them at the start of the game does not qualify you as done playing support. Your team really needs the vision. They really need to know what's going on in the game. Particularly your mid. You know, it's really painful playing mid without a lot of map vision because you, you just don't know what's going on. You don't know when you can gank. You don't know where the wards are. Or I'm sorry, where the runes are. Or it, if the other mid has gotten like a really great rune. Like a haste rune is something you need to know has happened before they're in your face. Uh, especially somebody like a Slither. So we do see them putting a lot of pressure into the Predator. Another point is that this Polywag Priest is level 6 now. He bought a Scarab. He doesn't need that. Uh, he absolutely does not need that. And he just hasn't really been doing anything. He's been sitting in this top lane. You know, it's 1 versus 1. Uh, occasionally 2 versus 1 when, when Tempest comes out. Polywag can afford to move around the map a little bit. He can buy TPs. He can move bot. He can gank bot. He can gank mid. He can move around, put those wards up. Right now, he has his ultimate. He should be able to go farm and probably get a tower at this point. If the Hellboard team is out of position, then he'll be able to definitely take down a tower for mid or for bot or wherever they are not. Uh, but he, he's really not doing it. He's kind of playing sloppy. He's going up here with no mana, and Gladiator is running back in. I'm not sure if he thought Polywog had mana to actually use spells. Uh, this level 7 Predator who runs right into Pitfall might actually just get away because he has tons of HP at this point. But, uh, you know, Polywog is really just kind of, kind of not using his resources properly at this point because essentially there are three resources in this game, right? There's gold, experience, and time. Most people understand the value of gold. They understand that they need to get it, and they want to get it, and that if they're carry, they should focus harder on getting it than if they're support. But we have seen misuse of the resources already, right? He's not using his gold wisely. He's not using it on support items. He's using it to buy items that he kind of feels like he needs at this point. Second resource is experience, which is really important. You know, it's good to get good lanes. It's good to have good lane times, you know, to stay in lane as much as possible. But you don't really need it as much as support. Again, it comes back if you're like a carry, you really need to focus on getting those levels. If you're somebody that has a really great ultimate or such, you need to really focus on getting it. Now see, there's a bunch of action going down the bot, and he just TPs back top. Um, I'm not really sure what he's hoping to get out of this. You know, Predator isn't even here. At this, oh no, Predator is here, and he had a kill on him. I'm silly. 
But, you know, it's like, he got a kill on Predator, but he's just not doing anything for his other lanes. His other lanes haven't seen it this entire game. Uh, he's just going back top over and over and over and over again. And there's still, there's a ward here, but I guarantee you it wasn't placed by Polyloy Priest. Who do we have warding? We have Bubbles warding. You know, Bubbles is kind of item dependent. Uh, especially going into the mid game, you really want him to get those core items, you know, rather be a, a portal key or a, 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 a tornado staff of death or whatever he wants. It's really kind of important that he gets those items much more than a polywalk priest, you know, because there are styles of polywalk priest where you push your tons of towers, you're moving from lane to lane, you, get, you know, you get post taste or whatever. But that was not an attempt to play this style. Uh, that's mostly a mid style or, a, um, I guess, almost exclusively a mid style. And you're just, you're not really seeing it here. Uh, at this point, I'm just going to speed up the replay a little bit. I'm kind of hoping Polywag Breeze does something at some point so that we can point out some good factors, but, you know, you just feel like he's buying Striders and other items he doesn't need. He TPs back top. Uh, move around, please. Just, just move around. I'm begging you people. People at home. My, my studio audience. Like, he might get another kill here on Predator. It, it just is still probably not worth it to me. You know, I really feel like he needs to be dominating and controlling the game much more. Which is an interesting concept. You know, moving around, controlling the entire game and not just your lane is something that'll take your win percent 10 or 20 points higher at this level. You know, because players just don't know how to adapt to a player that's moving around and killing them in all kinds of different lanes. It's very, very hard to adapt to. You know, you learn that in 16, 1700 games. But it's something like a, like a 1400 game. You can just, you can do work. Uh, <laughs> let me just see some action. I, I, I do like the uh, eight times sound effects. They're very entertaining. So yeah, it doesn't look like Polywag is going to do anything for me. I was kind of hoping he would do something a little bit more exciting. He still hasn't used his ultimate. Uh, he's level eight. And he still hasn't dropped it yet. Hopefully he'll use it at some point here. Now he doesn't have the mana. That's actually an interesting point uh, to bring up, is that until now, until he had his chalice, he has not had enough mana to use all of his spells in a team fight without before he ran out of mana, right? So essentially, if he used Jolt and Morph and Hold, he didn't have enough to ult. Or if he Jolted and ulted, he didn't have enough to hold and uh, Morph. So that's something to keep in mind. You want to make sure that you're building your staff. That Scarab wasn't doing much for him. If he had gotten the Int item first, I think he would have squeaked out enough to do all of his spells uh, quite a bit earlier. And, you know, you really have to be careful with these early game selections of items. Uh, he still hasn't used his ult. He hasn't had an opportunity to recently, but, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it, 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 the game is not coming together for him. So I think we'll leave it at that. Uh, we'll go ahead and move into our next game. Uh, our next game is going to be a little bit higher level. I think it's about 1550 to 1650, and we will get into that right now. Hello once again, you handsome nerds. We are back with game two of our little look at low-level uh, support play. This game we're going to be looking at Witch Slayer being played by Fresh Pub, which uh, I hope is a play on Fresh Pro because that is that is pretty legitimately hilarious. Uh, and he's going to be playing Witch Slayer. Uh, sort of the game we do have, I believe, him buying... No, uh, we actually have uh, Wraith on uh, Keeper buying the courier, which led uh, to Witch Slayer buying wards. Now, he only bought a single ward, or he did buy two wards. Okay, never mind. So he will be warding both the rune spot and uh, the creep block, hopefully, almost certainly. Uh, you may have noticed that there is no game sounds right now. That is because I am planning on speeding up this game quite a bit, and I don't want it to sound like a squirrel orgy in here. So uh, I have decided to go ahead and mute the sounds for this game. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a good idea or an awful idea yet. We'll just go ahead and uh, look at that retrospectively. Mm. I do also have a delicious glass of Earl Grey tea, which is like delicious drugs for my mouth, my dry, dry mouth. Mm. <laughs> Alright, so we're hopefully we'll be seeing uh, which side. He actually did not put the ward down uh, at the beginning. They do have the uh, Keeper Eye up here, which is good, but it, it's definitely not a substitute for a ward, particularly when you want vision uh, of incoming ganks and all that such, all such stuff. So I, I do like to see that early ward put. Hopefully he'll put it before the uh, two minute two minute uh, rune so that the <laughs> mid actually knows exactly where the rune spawn and what it is because the reaction to it can matter a little bit depending on what it is. Uh, so what overplaying a little bit, they're doing a good job punishing it. It just looks like Wish Slayer Nomad is going to be going up against Jeroziah Silhouette. Uh, Jeroziah S Silhouette should be a pretty legitimate lane. Uh, Silhouette will be able to play fairly offensive while having those heals and shields from Jeroziah should let her kind of stay alive in the lane. 
Ooh, I just coughed a lot there. So if that was muted.